What's going on guys? Uh, welcome to the channel. My name is Wes. If you haven't seen any of my other videos, I'm not normally dressed in this more like formal business casual way. I just literally got home from work, took the pup out real quick, and wanted to record this video while I still had some daylight because the lighting in my place isn't that great. So this video is going to be in three segments. Uh, segment one, I'm going to briefly go over how calories are calculated just in general with you know pen and paper that you can do outside of any sort of technology. And segment two is going to be the actual tech behind it. And then segment three is going to go right into the limitations and the best practices for how you can improve the accuracy of your Apple Watch. If you want to skip segments one and two, you can jump straight to segment three to go over the limitations and the best practices. You can jump to this timestamp popping up on the screen now. All right, for those of you still around, let's get into it. Segment one, how do we calculate calorie burn outside of any sort of fitness tracker? So if you don't own one, then this is something you can do. There's something called the Compendium of Physical Activities that was put together through years and years of study by the National Institute of Health and Arizona State University. So within this study, they signed a ton through every sort of various activity you can imagine called met values or metabolic equivalents. So it's a very simple calculation where you take your weight in kilograms, multiply it by the met value, and that's going to be the estimated calorie or energy expenditure within a given hour. So for example, I wanted to do, I wanted to compare a workout that I did the other day when I ran a 5k at the track. According to my Apple Watch, I ran at an 8 minute pace for the entire 3.17, I did 3.19. So at this time it was about 25, 26 minutes to finish off the 5k. By looking at the compendium, I found that the met value at 8 minutes per mile was 11.8. So I multiplied that by my weight in kilograms and got that if I kept that pace up for 60 minutes, I would have burned a little over a thousand calories an hour. Then I took the fraction, the 26 minutes of the hour that I did, which gave me 43% of an hour, multiplied it by that, and according to this calculation, I would have burned about 437 calories. Now, my Apple Watch said that I only burned 380. Why? Because there's a lot more sophisticated algorithms that need to be taken into consideration. So what accounts for this 50, 60 calorie difference between what the Apple Watch gave me and the simple MET calculation? Well, what's missing here is body fat percentage, mass, exertion level, oxygen consumption, sex, just tons and tons of other things. And what the Apple Watch has done very well has improved their hardware and processor to calculate very, very complicated and specific and proprietary algorithms for them to become way more accurate than other fitness trackers. So let's get into segment two, the tech inside the Apple Watch. So let's go ahead and start off by saying that the Apple Watch does have some shortcomings that I wish it had. And number one is the battery life. I mean, come on, like if there's been times that I've forgotten to put it on the charger and then I don't have it as an activity tracker the next day if I got to go out the door to work or something. It doesn't measure my sleep, which I think is very important that other fitness trackers do. And this is all because of everything else that it uses your battery for. And I'm going to get into all the different subcomponents that does make it a more accurate calorie tracker, but it does hurt it in other aspects. There's a number of things that Apple has put inside the Apple Watch that make it a great calorie tracker. It uses a heart rate sensor, an accelerometer, a gyroscope, a barometer, an altimeter, a compass, a GPS sensor and a motion coprocessor that uses uh, low power continuous motion for sensing and processing the data. I mean all this different tech that it takes together and uses the data to perform all these algorithms because not at all times is everything getting a specific reading. So the proprietary processor that Apple puts within their Apple Watch that keeps improving and improving is doing these complicated algorithms constantly. And I want to go back to the heart rate sensor because this is going to have an effect on the best practices that I'm going to discuss in segment three. So for a heart rate sensor to be properly used on a wrist, it's not measuring your pulse like you would do in a standard way where you can put your fingers on your wrist and measure the beats per minute. 
if you've ever noticed on different fitness trackers, you're going to see like a green LED. And this LED is called the photoplethysmogram or PPG, which is much easier to say. Now, it's green because it needs to measure the skin perfusions of blood flow in the skin. And every time your heart pumps, it's, it's sending the green LED light and measuring back the absorption rate of that light because blood is red. So blood is reflecting red, but it's gonna absorb the green LED. The Apple Watch at all times just use varying levels of brightness depending on skin tone, BMI, fat percentage, a number of things. And then it also uses the processor to issue a confidence level in the data that it's receiving. So if it thinks it's getting errors in data, then it's going to try to figure out a way to, to account for the mishaps in between of the data sets. Also, it only measures between 30 and 210 beats per minute. I don't know why, but that's what it does. You probably shouldn't be below or up above 210 anyway, but that's just a something to note. So all this data from these varying subcomponents is then mashed together in these very complicated formulas like this one, or this one, or this one. And you know, even this one, which is just on its face, very basic, but it, this is the inputs that it's getting using the altimeter, especially that says whether you're standing or sitting. If you do own an Apple Watch, there's been times where you're sitting and all of a sudden you hit your stand goal. It's not magic. It's just doing its best that it can. And then there's a difference between the uh, Apple Series 4 and beyond that was different than the ones prior, which is these black crystal diodes put on the back. It not only helps with the heart rate sensor, but it also helps with the ECG measurement. Because when you put your finger on the rotating dial, what you're doing is creating a closed loop and it's sending electricity through your wrist, through your arm, through your heart, and back through your finger in a closed circuit. I just love technology like that. And Apple's gonna continue to innovate like that because they've got more money than God. So all those subcomponents, all these sophisticated things that you're wearing on your wrist leads us to segment three. Let's go into best practices and limitations. There's no magic to how this thing works. It's doing its absolute best that it can. And Apple is issuing software updates and then in future iterations, hardware updates to make it more and more accurate. So even in a 2017 study that was put out, the Apple Watch was still the most accurate. Now it didn't reach the statistical confidence level that you would want to rely on for the most accurate readings, but at the time it was the most accurate above anything on the market. So tip number one, make sure the back is clean. Like I mentioned earlier, there's these LED lights, there's these photodiodes, these black crystal diodes, they're taking all these different kind of measurements. Anything that is blocking it is going to inhibit the more accurate readings. Number two, you gotta make sure that it's snug and tight against your skin, not loose. Because again, we're measuring different light absorption between the watch and your skin. The more you keep still, the better off the readings are gonna be. And that's exactly why I use the sport loop instead of any of the other ones, because I mean, you can, you can make micro adjustments with this thing. Number three, if you got tattoos on your wrists, this can affect the skin perfusions that your skin is experiencing because there's a lot of inks and stuff that are gonna stop the light from going in and then being received by the watch. So if you have a tattooed wrist and a clean wrist, it's more accurate if you put it on the clean wrist. Here's an interesting one. The Apple Watch is more accurate during consistent movement workouts. Walking, running is a couple of them. This was proven in the study that was done for fitness trackers is because it's using all the, like the accelerometer, gyroscope, everything to detect movement and know that, okay, with this movement, I'm gonna assign this met value and if it's moving in this manner, they're constantly working and they don't have to account for any periods of rest. Irregular movements is a little iffy, like if you're doing CrossFit or playing tennis or soccer or something. So with that being said, if you're walking your dog, for example, make sure that the leash is in the hand that you don't wear your Apple Watch. If you try to record a walk and you've ever noticed that perhaps your move ring didn't move as much as you thought, 
It's probably because your arm wasn't swinging if you had the leash in the Apple Watch hand because it's trying to measure accelerometer and base it based on the movement of walking or running and it's just not getting any data. The next one, this should be an obvious one. You gotta pick the right sport. I had mentioned the Met values earlier. Met is actually used in the calculations for the Apple Watch. So if you choose running, but you're walking, the watch is gonna assume you're probably a slow runner, but it wants to assign a higher Met value and it's gonna multiply your calorie burn a lot more than what's accurate. You gotta be honest with yourself and you gotta pick the right stuff. And you gotta only start it when you start the exercise. Because again, and I'm guilty of this too, I would start my, my functional training choice during warm-ups. I'm not necessarily burning that many calories, but my watch is gonna multiply my calorie burn because it thinks I've already started the workout. It can only do so much. That also leads into the next point. Make sure all your Apple Health data is accurately up to date and completely filled out. So if you do have a scale like I do that measures body fat, that's another data point that the Apple Watch can use to give you the right calorie burn, height, weight, sex, all the basic data. So that was probably a lot more information that you were even started looking for in terms of how can I help the most accurate fitness tracker be more accurate, but I found a lot of that stuff fascinating and wanted to share. So if you like that content, there's more to come. Uh, in the, on this channel, I do a bunch of reviews. I like to fit, focus on tech, I, anything that deals with fitness or just adventure in general. I've got some other videos I can put in the description and I'd appreciate a like, a comment, subscribe would be great, uh, and any suggestions of other stuff you'd like me to look into, let me know. All right, go do some awesome. Peace. I got horses in the back, trunk in the front, exterior red and that inside but a cup. I got what you need, I got what you want.